Good evening, everybody. This is Debbie. I kind of went crazy buying seed beads, and so I was playing around with how to use them, and I came up with this design. I think I used a, a little bit different techniques in it, but I got so like into making this. I have never made a, any of my um, designs original designs more than I've made this one so I'm calling it totally addicted because because of the number of um, you know beads you have to put on on the bands I don't know this is sitting around watching TV and methodically doing that um, and then the placement and just you know, looming it back it's all very simple it's pretty much a whole bunch of single chains as I will demonstrate. Um, so I'm calling it totally addicted. I think I just said that because I can't seem to stop making this. There's so, like an infinite variety of colors besides the beads um, and bands. And this is a five, five bar wide like this. I'm going to be just demonstrating a three bar wide and this is one sample of th uh, three bars wide. Here's another five, another five, another five and this is actually going to somebody and hopefully I'll get it out before um, they see this video because the color scheme is very revealing. Uh, but I made this especially for her. Um, this is a full two lengths, you know, two double double loom length. And so, I mean, it's not, it fits just, you know, once you put like a little clasp or something on it, you probably don't have to add anything else unless you have a larger wrist and I have a smaller wrist. And this is seven wide. This is actually the first one I did. And then this one, I just made a little segment trying to use. You know, these aren't seed beads. These are uh, like kind of disc-shaped hematite, which I love hematite. It's such a cool, cool. So I'm just experimenting around. Okay. Before we get started, I'm going to give you a little, you know, lesson and different options of laying the beaded bands. And... Um, unfortunately, this, well, I don't know if it's unfortunate, but this particular design requires beads on the band. You can't, you cannot make it without them, and you will see why. Oh, oh another kitty. This is sugar. I don't think anyone's seen sugar. Oh, she just took off again. Sugar's over 15 years old. Anyhow, how do I explain this? I'm going to start with five. You can make it any increments. Of, you can make it three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. However wide you want it, it's all the same principle. Okay. You're going to start out. See, by placing your connecting band on the whatever the center pin is, and then you will place. You know what? I'm using these. Okay. I'm using uh, this is some one of the pink Persians, 300 count up the center. I'm using these. Um, it's like orange on the outside and orange on the inside. I think it's supposed to be pink, but it looks orange. Um, a gift from Cynthia Miller at Cray's Mama. I think that was who sent me these. Ah, my brain always short circuits when I have to come up with somebody's name on camera. Oh, the nerves. So anyways, I beaded these and these are going to be the outside, like right here. I just used these silver ones. I didn't put a layer of beads on the in inside here. So I doubled these. I'm just trying something a little different. So I put two beads there. It all makes sense a little later on. 
so all the design, all the bracelets, no matter how thick, will start out, or how wide, will start out single chain all the way up the center. I'm not going to do, do it all the way because once I get you going, you know, just pretend this is all the way to the end. And if you do two full lengths, not counting this end and this end, like the, the top and bottom border, there are 24 pins on each side. So that's a total of 48 if you're making it this length, okay? So you're going to have to make either on before you start the bracelet or you can do it on the loom. I'm going to show you both ways because I know some might find it easier one way or than the other. Okay. If you're doing it on the loom, first of all, I forgot, after you get the center, I'm sorry I'm confusing you, after you get the center row made you are going to take which Whatever bands you put the beads on, use the same color for the top and the bottom and the top border. Okay, so this is what you want prepped before we start doing the beaded bands. Okay, very simple. So on the five across, you're going to be putting two on each side. I'll show this way first doing it you know straight on the loom and then I'll show you the prep of doing it before, you know or I should say doing it as the as you progress on the design or we'll be doing these single chains separately if you want to do that it's your choice okay so you're going to place one beaded from the center out and then another one with the center out. And then you're going to take another beaded band, and they must be beaded for this to work. And then cap it. Now, I'm going to find my hook. And while it's still positioned just like this, you don't have to, you know, turn it around or anything, you're going to reach in, pull this band out from the cap, loom it towards the center bar pin and then this one you're not going to take it to the home pin you're going to take it this out to here and then take this one over oh no take this one hold on a second I just have to reach under there and grab it You're going to take this over to that. Okay. Now, doing it this way, these bands are twisted. So, you can put your fingers on these two pins, just so they don't pop off. And you're going to release this. Okay. And what you're looking for is see how now these have turned around. So it's like making each band is kind of a U shape. There's a U shape here, and this one's a U shape. Okay. So you're going to you can you can fix the beads a little later, but the goal is to have each bead in the center. that, right? So then you're going to reset these bands. See how that's U-shaped? Right, don't worry about it, just keep watching me and it'll make sense. Because what happens afterwards is we're going to be re putting the, the bands that go like this in between 
in between, okay? So you need um, the beads on there to make that little pocket, okay? Continuing doing it this way, just flip it around. You're going to do the same thing on this side. And hopefully I'll do it a little more smoothly, a little more gracefully. But I've, <laughs> I've used these white bands quite a bit, so they're all stretched out and the hook just wants to get caught up in it. Okay. Place a cap. Then do the same thing. Now this one you're going to bring out here, and this one like this. And I found that you want this one uh, like twisted, um, untwisted. It kind of it'll look like this. Twisted, it, it'll look like this with the with the bead in the center. It just makes a, a along the center it just makes these bands um, cling a little better. This is one that I think I, I did without it and see these stick, sticking out? They stick out more. It depends how you you like it. Either um, you can see right here the bands or they're tighter and you really don't see them. You just see the bead because the twist will make it Hold tight, you know, stick closer to the center pin. Okay. Consistency is more important than how you do it. Okay, so now when you let it loose, it makes the little, it turns the bands so they're like, like they have little legs. See, like that. That's what you're looking for. The bead in the center and this and this. Pull it back over and then see how that one's now th this way. And you can just, like I said, you don't really have to worry about the beads. I'm just trying to get it in the center for it demonstration's sake, because you can just move them afterwards. It's easier afterwards. Okay. The other option is if you're doing three bar wide, you're only going to need one, ba one beaded band and one capped. If you're doing five wide like this, you're going to need this setup. You need three beaded bands, one, two, and the cap. So you can make all all of all of these beforehand if you want. Okay. And if you're doing a seven wide, you're gonna need four beaded bands on each side, so it'll look like this. One, two, three, and a cap. And can you continue on the demonstration of the five wide. You will then turn it around and from the beaded cap, just let's see. Here's another one. I made so many examples here, okay? So these are three for the three pin, bar pin wide, these are for the seven, and these two I'm looping are just for this five bar wide, okay? So if you have extra pins, you can just make a whole bunch of, of these for whatever length you want. But then you would take it off. See, when you take it off, it'll do what we want it to do 
on your hook. Then you're going to come over here and place it like this. And then just pull it over your pins. Again, we'll worry about fixing that pin later. And we'll take another one that we've done the single chain looming. It kind of bounces itself into place like that. And go on this side. And whatever pins we're going to stretch it across, we will be doing like a y, making a Y shape. Oh darn it, I've got a message on my phone. I'm going to have to go check. Just going to grab this, stretch it across the pins. So you're doing the same thing, whether you you know you just do it as you go, or do them all beforehand, and then just keep transferring them. That's how it's going to be. I'll be back. So again, for a full double length wrap you're going to need 48 segments 24 each side of these beaded configurations so if you're doing a three bar pin wide you're going to need 48 of these I'm going to have to throw these white bands away afterwards. They've been stretched way too many times and are awkward for demonstration purposes. Okay, so make 48 of these, then loom them back. If you want to do all those first, you'll make 48 like this. For the five bar pin wide design, you'll do one, two, three, total of three beads, beaded bands, which includes the cap. Bring them all back. Or for seven wide, you'll do one, two, three, and the fourth one is the cap. Figure out how how long you want it. Don't count the the top and bottom borders, and then however many rows you have going this way, you know, times two, because you're going to need a, a set for this side and a set for this side. So this is what the seven bar wide looks like. And then you can just like take them all off and put them on pencils and take you know use them that way if you have plenty of extra bar pins you can just leave them like this and take them as you need them or you can do it as you go on your loom and that's how I'm going to do it Especially when you're only using two beaded bands at a time. Okay, 
So this is how it looks. It, I, don't, I can't even say which one would take longer. It's easier to do it that way, get everything done, you know, beat all your bands, get all your segments made, and then transfer them here. Because, you know, that's the whole theory of the, um, the assembly line. It helps speed up things. The redundancy makes you more efficient. So there's one band with a bead, and then my cap. I've never tried it with two beads, but it'll be interesting, right? So with it being this narrow, I'm only doing one. So I'm bringing this one here, and taking this one here. And we have to lift it off so it turns to make this little hook, I mean a little U-shape. See that? Pull it over. This U-shape is the important thing right here. Okay. Zoom out however many you have to. I guess I'm just going to put that one there. Uh -oh. Trying to finicky, be finicky with my bands. You want to snap them in place, but don't do it too hard because <laughs> then the bead slams against your thumb and it hurts. But it helps if they're not twisted. Okay, I'll try that again. It doesn't matter which way you do it, you know, which pin it goes on. Really, Debbie? <laughs> then you take it off. You can see it's, um, see how it's got that twist right there? It's twisted. Okay, now watch what happens when I release it. It frees itself and makes that U shape. Then with that, with that, I'm just going to turn it back around. We're just going to be alternating this. Again, if you if you made them like this ahead of time, this is just demonstrating. This is pretend they're on a different a different loom. Obviously, you can't. You're not going to be having them all on the loom you're working on, or it'll be in the way. Here. So, let's not confuse you. Okay. Now I'm pretending that I had these made ahead of time. <laughs> Just to show you how it looks as I'm doing it. So, pretend I had all the, a bunch of these made. I 
whole bunch of these on, on here, right? I grab it, pull this off. It already makes the U shape. So I'm going to put it here. Because it's going here, I'm going to place the ends here and here. And I'll show you, let's see, I'm going to show you how it looks when, if it's not twisted. Remember, it makes this band looser. Okay, you just have to follow. Follow it. You can see, if you look carefully, this bottom part of the band, it doesn't twist. You can see it just follows a straight line through the bead. So you're going to want to take it off and make sure it has one twist in it. And that depends, like I said. If you don't want to see this band sticking out, if you don't want to see the band as much, it'll look like this. You'll want to twist it. If you want to see the band Coming up in the center more. Whoops. You leave it untwisted. Again, it's not so much important whether it's twisted or untwisted, it's that you do it consistently. Turn it around, either grab a conf um, something you've made on another loom or do it as you go. If you're doing it as you go, once you place these two, you're going to have to lift it off so we get this to turn to this position and pull it back over. And you just slide the speed in between. Or you can wait to fix it later. Okay. Interrupted this pin. Remember, if you already have this made, you'll just take the two ends and put them here, which we are going to do in a moment on this one. One end, bring it here. Take this one over to here. Temporary release it. See, releasing it is the same way as pulling it off. You know, pulling it off here, it, you know, it, from a separate, having, you know, if you do them separate. releases this these other bands to have this shape so I'm going to do a demonstration again as if you had made these all beforehand the only difference is how many you do in accordance to how wide you want it I had all these done. I'm going to need one on this side now. So I retrieve one I've pre made. Oops. Grab the wrong end. Let's try this again. Make 
sure you pay attention to which end you grab, or it falls apart. So I want to grab this end. Okay. Well, there you have the configuration you're looking for. And we'll be using this pin, so we're going to put the ends right here. Oh, it just kind of slipped on by itself. Okay, and by observing this, um, it looks like it didn't have a twist, so I'm going to put a twist in it. Okay, we will continue to do this all the way up the loom. It's a little time consuming. To make this bracelet, but what I like about it, and the whole addiction factor, is it's very soothing. I'm addicted to being soothed, right? <laughs> Aren't we all? Um, it's not complicated. You don't have to remember. You know, there's not a lot to remember once you get, you know, once you get the hang of it. And sometimes redundancy is just nice. And I guess maybe that's why some people like sorting. Um, mixed bags of bands out, there's a redundancy to it, and and in that redundancy there's kind of turn off your mind, but you're doing something productive, right? Oops. Take this over here. Take this over here. Temporarily lift it off. So you can reposition your band, our bands. I'm going to worry about that bead later. Now, for those of you who might be doing five or seven, let me do another one to show you how it looks like with multiple. Okay. With more than just two beaded bands, okay? It just looks longer. <laughs> It's the exact same configuration, right? Get all these like U-shaped with the bead in the middle. And I'm going to stretch it not here, but make the Y shape. And find your last band. And just pull it across to go over each pin. Oops. Just making sure that you've got that U shape. There we go. Okay, that's not quite in the middle, but no worries. So that's how it looks. Now, if I had another, you know, bar here, there would have just been one more of these, so this, there would have been one here, and then this would be down here. It's just longer. That's all there is to it. I hope I haven't confused you. It, you know, just don't put too much thought into it, because it's, it's so basic. I'm just making the single chain on the loom and sideways instead of um, or horizontal, you know, horizontally, horizontally instead of vertically. Okay, so I'm going to go oops, lift this over to this one. And release it as if you're taking it off the loom so that 
however many bands you have coming this way we'll have that nice little u-shaped again this u-shape is what gives a little pocket in here right through here and it's it might sound complicated but when I get back I will show you how to put the single chains going up very very easy way to do it all right I'm going to continue watching I think I'm watching what am I watching right now? Not the gold rush, but the other gold rush where they, they're on the ocean, the dredges in the wintertime. No, this one's in the summertime. <laughs> I like watching people dig for gold. <laughs> it's so entertaining. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. Okay, I have my loom up to this point. And this is what your end pins, you know, for your top border will look like. Now I left one right here. Like I forgot to, like, you know, when you place it as you go. As opposed to having uh, uh, them all done pre prior. Let's see. I forgot to twist this one. I didn't forget. I purposely didn't twist one. If you can see whether it's single one bead or two beads, see how they're going up and down? And the correct way is they're, they look like that. So all you need to do, where are you, is take it off and fix it. It's real simple. Okay, so if you missed one, no biggie. Just go back in. And I found, too, that um, if See how this one, like all these, I've made it so they're not twisted and this one's a little bit twisted. I found that by just grabbing the top part of it and going like that, look at that, how simple it gets all untwisted. I, I don't think it really matters. I think they'll be fine anyways, but I don't know. I just figure the less, less twisted bands are before you start looming back, uh, the neater the design and as you saw my post yesterday of my brown and blue Mayflower design. Oh. <laughs> Neatness isn't my greatest virtue. Okay. Now the next step, we're going to be placing single bands on all these. So this here is the end, you know, the, the border. And it's the same as if it were here next to the middle. You'll be doing the same thing whether you're going up this row or this row. Okay, all the rows going up, you're doing the exact same thing. I will demonstrate it here just to give you an um, understanding. I don't have any. Let's use these. Oops. So what you're going to do, you can either use two hooks or a hook and a finger and arrows pointing this way because we're placing bands. We're going to take the top half of this one and just bring it over to expose that pin. Okay, You can use your hand or your, your hook to place the band here. Now you'll take the top half and bring it back and place it. Then you'll take the top half of this band, this side of the band, bring it over. It's real important that you have one down here and then this one right here, okay? You'll place it down here and then bring it over. Now you have it going. So you'll take the next one, the top, only the top half. Okay. 
lay it down, put that back. Okay. Bring the top half over. Place the band down and put it over. So as you'll see, you're 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 putting them through the center. Okay, and it looks. I'll take these off so I can use it. It's going to look the same on the outside. Take the top half. Expose the pin. Place a band. Lay it back down. Take another band. With this half. Lay it down. Put that back. Lift the top half of this one up next. Place a band. Put it back, okay? So now I'm going to do it on here for a little bit and then be on our way. Just lifting the top half. Place the band. Bring it back over. Okay. Now we're going to lift the top half only of this side of it. Expose that pin. Lay this down. Place it back. Lift the top half of this band. See, this is why you need the um, beads, or it doesn't make this little pocket for these to go into. And that's what makes it look like this. See, they're they're woven woven underneath the bands that go this way. Of course, on this side, this top side here, you're going to see the single chains. This isn't really miss. I missed one, so I had to tie it together to hold it sign in place. So you see the single chains on this side, but not on this side. And I suppose if you don't make a mistake, there's a mistake, you could wear it on this side. You just have to pop pop the beads through so you can wear it like that. And that's to each his own. Okay. Back to work. Lift this end. As you can see, all we've done are a bunch of single chains. I've just used the bands in a different way. I'm placing them a little differently, yet in the end result is simply uh, a single chain design. Use your fingers or hook with you know whatever works. And you will do that all the way to the very last pin. So if this was the last pin right here, this empty one right here, okay. You, you're you're just going to lay this on top of, whoa, that, that, uh, that end one. And this is how it looks on this side. The same except opposite. Almost did was going to use the um, the 600 count 
um, brown and white dual layer bands. But I don't know. These are. Where are you from? Where are these pinks from? They've got little different colored, like blue and pink sparkles in it. Um, 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 um. They're from a mixed. I forget now. Um, but they're pretty. And I just, I like the play of color of, of these iridescent bands. Like, they're kind of pink, they're kind of brown. Like a little bit of goldy orange hue to them. And orange, as most of you know, is not my color. But when you mix it with pink, I think it looks really cool. I love blue. Uh, I guess it because it makes more of a salmony, which leads towards pink. Pink's cool. After all, I get pink skin. <laughs> Okay, um, I think I've done enough of this that you've got the hang of it. Very, very simple, just a little different. All right, now I'll be back, and you know what? When you come back, I'll just go put the end bands on, cap it, and it's three single chain rows to loom. But I will, you know, I will get you started on that. So I'll be back and show you. Alrighty, I've uh, got all these bands placed and that's what it looks like. Now the only thing I would recommend doing is looking on the side and making sure that see how like my the pink is in between the top and the bottom. Like right here. The pink is kind of below. So just move it around till they get back into that proper proper sandwich position. It just will help you as you're um, looming it back. So we don't have I, this kind of mistake. I don't know if this was from placing it wrong or looping it back, looming it back wrong. I'm guessing it was probably placement. Because that's why it's wrong. Anyhow, now to finish off band placement. Cap it. Turn it around. And I like to use a heavier loom in the center because it is a little tight. Um, and the center, do that first since there is more tension and then work your way up. So all you're going to do is take the, you know, one, two, or three, or how many you need to go that way till you get to your border bands, and then reach down. I should have said the center I, when I was first practicing, I did try to put like a like larger bead in the center, but I don't know. I just never wound up following th following through on it. So again. All these are single chains, so you get to go all the way up the middle, finish the middle, then go back and do one side, the other side, one side, the other side, until you work your way out. And this is the only one that's going to be underneath these two. It has to be, or else, you know, it won't hold together properly. And after that, if you got these sandwiched properly, you're just going to be pulling back the top half. 
because this should be right here in the middle. That's why I said to go and make sure that they're all properly sandwiched because um, I found it confusing when the middle band kind of fell below the bottom, the ones. It's right there in the middle. So again, just pull, push, pull back the top half of the band, see? Maybe I should have used more distinguishing colors. It's right there. So pretend all that ends done. Okay. This is the only one where you're going to be pulling back both halves of the um, the loop, and after that, it's just the top half to reveal the bands going in that direction that are in between. These little sandwiches we made. And that's why you need the beads. Or else it doesn't work. Or else you just have single chains with, you know, horizontal horizontal bands. F. Oh what is that? Oh, you're so cute. He does this little tap. It's the trainer taught him to touch. You touch something when you want something, so we don't know what he wants. He just taps and touches everything in the house till we figure something out. <laughs> I think he really wishes he spoke people. <coughs> oh, we wish we spoke people so we understood woof. I mean, I wish he's, he wishes he spoke people because we don't understand woof. All right. City boy wants to play ball, so I'll go play ball. Finish this and then we will take it off the loom and take a look at how awesome this design is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a nice design. Okay, so I've done everything but the very last couple of border bands. You're ready to take it off. Now, don't be dismayed if it looks all messy because it's just part of the process. And especially with like these, um, a lot of these lesser um, priced beads aren't quite the same size. I think only those little tiny uh, check beads, seed beads, and pricier ones are exactly the same size. So there will be a little difference from that. And then, remember I said we would um, fix where the beads go because they're just going to move around. So see that one right there? It should be right in between those two in, this, in the center. See? Remember those U shapes we were making? Okay. So you're going to want to put the bead in the center. Some are like, you know, this one just stayed in the center. This one's gone because it's way over here. So just take your fingernail and work it on over. Fingernails. And work it on over. And these top ones. You should, you know, pull this out, and if it's not quite centered, just move it over till it's centered. And find your little lost beads, and just do that. And when you're done, I think you're going to be pleased. So yeah, already, look how much nicer just that looks right there compared to all this, and even on that side. So, there you have it. My totally addicted 
bracelet. Let me zoom out a little bit. I've made many of them, and this will probably be the last one because it's time to move on <laughs> to something else. I have had lots and lots of fun making this. Thank you so much for watching, and if you would like, subscribe. Right, I haven't done a tutorial for YouTube in a while. Subscribe to my channel here at Deb's Thing, and possibly give me a follow over on Instagram at Deb, Deb's Thing. Good night.